I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but um, for those of us who prepare for worship every Sunday, um, we are given some assigned scripture passages. It's called the lectionary. And um, every Sunday throughout the year, I just have to go, and it's published online and all those kind of things, the texts that are assigned for this Sunday this Sunday after this first Sunday after Easter in the Easter season. And um, there are usually four readings, uh, and there's one from the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament, as we often call it. There's always a psalm, uh, and of course there's uh, a gospel reading and also one of the letters that is in the New Testament. So those are assigned readings that uh, come to different themes, that want to tackle different themes that are... Uh, thread their way throughout the scriptural text. Themes like covenant and forgiveness and love. And I was drawn to Psalm 133 this week because of you. It's all your doing. I was going to say it's all your fault. Of course, it's not your fault. Uh, but I was thinking how blessed we were going to be to have uh, these fine folk come to sing for us. And the psalm reading, uh, psalms, of course, were generally meant to be sung. We read them all the time in church, but they were meant to be sung uh, with uh, worship when the people gathered, the Israelites gathered, that they would sing the psalms. Not all of them, but some, most of them actually. And there'll often be a notation that says, ah, this is to be accompanied by the lute. And um, so there is that sense that as people gathered together to worship, they sang the psalms. And um, the psalms are beautiful and comforting. Sometimes they're very challenging. But this particular one really appealed to me this week as I was reading it, as I imagined Aaron sitting in his robes, his long flowing beard, and the waters of love just pouring out over him, down into his collar and all over, through his beard and soaking him. I love that image, and so I was drawn to that in this Psalm 133. And that brings me around to love and resurrection. Because we are an Easter people. We are an Easter people. And how does resurrection come to us now as we're living it after Easter Sunday? Well, I want to share with you three examples where I experienced resur resurrection this week. And I think if we pay attention, each one of us could find a moment in time when we experience resurrection almost every day new life, new beginnings. I want to go to the last Sunday evening when we had um, full immersion baptism here. The hot tub was up there and I was elegantly, eloquent, eloquently dressed in my shorts and shirt and um, sort of uh, rubberized shoes so that I could step into the hot tub and step there with a group of people who felt called by God to come to that moment in their life's journey. Many of these folks, as you well know, are struggling to hold on to their lives and their sobriety and to stay clean. And as they stepped into the tub last Sunday, it was one of the most deeply moving experiences I've ever had. And I want to thank Pete and Brad who lead our Sunday evening a gathering time for the power of that moment, that full immersion, when those folks who had taken the broken pieces of their lives and brought it together, in that moment when they were fully immersed in the waters of baptism, dying to an old way of life and hopefully rising to a new way of life, powerful moment resurrection was in the room and I was so grateful to be a part of it I also experienced resurrection just last night um, 
we were with our family. Uh, Gordon, and, Gordon and I had dinner with our daughter and son-in-law and uh, three of our four grandsons. And as we were gathering around to have this meal, um, our littlest guy, Nicky, he's 11 years old. He has a very caring heart. Very. And one of the things he's brought our attention to is this whole thing about straws. I know, it seems like a small thing, doesn't it? But we now make an effort as family never to have straws in our drinks. And you might ask me, what is that all about, Linda? I mean, come on, straws in drinks. You know what that's about? That's about loving our planet. If every one of us gave up having straws in our drinks, the planet would thank us because that is some of the debris that is choking off the goodness of our world. And my little 11-year-old, and his mom talked to him, and she said, well, maybe you should write a letter to the mayor because there are some places in, in Calgary, some uh, public restaurants, that no longer have straws anywhere on the premises. And um, Don was saying to Nikki, well, maybe you should write to the mayor and, and encourage more places not to use straws. It's a small thing, but it's a big thing. And Nikki wouldn't name it as resurrection, but I would in the sense that his care for the planet that's in his heart, that he wants the planet to rise to the beauty and wonder that God created for us. A moment of resurrection. And last but not least, I speak about the horrific accident that happened on Friday night as a group of young people and their coaches and the driver and the radio announcer were making their way to Nippon so that they could participate in a semi-final hockey game. And I can imagine the conversation, oh yeah, we're going to really hit it tonight. We, we've got this one covered. We've got this and the coach drawing out things maybe at the last moment. And for some of them, it would be their last moment. Their very last moment in this earthly life. And... Um, out of all that difficult, horrific time, I read about a young man, an 18-year-old man, who was killed, one of the young men that was killed, Mr. Boulay. His last name is Boulay. Leonard Boulay, I think, is his first name is Leonard. In which his parents invited medical teams to come and to harvest his organs so that he, in his dying, might give new life to six other people. If ever there was a more profound example of resurrection for me, it came through that young man. In his dying, he gave new life. And so as we live through the difficulties of the days to come, as we hear more of the stories of the lives of these people who were killed in this horrific crash, may we cling to resurrection. May we have a sense of hope in the midst of our despair and to know that God is with us. There is no place that we can go, nothing we can experience that God's love isn't with us. And I often, as a person in ministry, am asked, where was God in the midst of all of that? Well, I believe in my heart that God's tears were the first tears to fall. I believe in my heart that God is with us in every part of our lives, in life, in death, and in life beyond death. May we hold fast to our belief in resurrection this day because we are an Easter people.
Amen.